Hi, hey guys. So in class, we would have been talking about how to use value in your artwork and contrast. Uh, now we're going to move on to actually talking about how to put this into your guys' actual assignments and into your artwork and kind of like how to really use your pencil wisely. So we've been talking about this actually a lot in class and that is with our pencil, we can use different pressure with our pencil and apply a little bit more, a little bit less and basically change the value of our pencil. Uh, it's one of the easiest media or tools in art to be able to use to kind of like show different values. And so that's what we're gonna use in this class and kind of talk about. Uh, one note to make is that value can be used as almost any media, as long as you can show light and dark with that media. So even your color pencils can also kind of do this. And that's a kind of a cool thing you guys can even show and kind of practice and play with moving forward. But for this whole week and this whole unit, we are going to strictly use our pencils because we're really going to practice that skill of what pressure looks and feels like when we use our pencil. Uh, so I would have ended my talk with this slide right here and talking about this smooth blending and using a value scale. So remember that word smooth blending is when we take our pencil and we use some other kind of tool or media to kind of very smoothly see a transition between one dark and light value into another one. Um, so when we look at this right, right here, we talk about how to use a value value scale. Uh, a value scale is something that we make or we create so that we can see the range of values that our tool can make. So right down here at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and use my tools to kind of annotate and show you that. So down here is this value scale that I was just talking about. So if you see where I just kind of highlighted right here, a value scale, like I said, shows the range of values that you can, you can use with whatever media you're using. So this is how dark a pencil can get and how light your pencil can get and everything in between. And that's that contrast that we were talking about. So there's nice contrast between these first few values and these last few values, but not really in the middle here. These are all called our mid-tone or our mid-range values. And these all kind of just exist to kind of help create contrast between the other ones as well. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to look at one of the things in your packet. You're going to use what it looks like two salt and pepper shakers and a couple of apples and an orange. Uh, and we're going to actually add value to that to kind of show how three-dimensional something can look. The, the whole purpose of value is to make forms look more rounded and actually like they're three-dimensional. And what we're doing is we are trying to mimic the light and the shadow that we see hitting something. If you look at this example here, I have the sphere. It is literally what a sphere looks like if you were to stick it in a room with top lighting of like whatever room that you're in where the light hits the sphere at the top and creates a cast shadow on the bottom and starts to make that circle or that round object look more three dimensional. So when we look at what I have over here, this is the actual uh, handout that I have on your Google Classroom. So on in your packet, it looks just like this, except it's blank. It is just the hard sort of like outlines of what these objects look like. And it's going to be your job to look at this and to actually fill in the values that you see on your paper. So I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple of techniques and some strategies. The first one is by actually literally labeling your values. So I'm gonna, on this little piece of paper here, we're gonna talk about values as a number. Okay, so as you guys can see right here, I kind of have these labeled just like I just talked about to you guys with the other one. Um, so this is like our range of values. Uh, when we get into this really, really far range of values where we're just like pushing super, super hard, I know you guys are gonna better show me a huge difference between these values. And that's why I'm kind of cutting this off at eight because normally we can only really make a range of about eight, maybe 10 values when we have lots of different pencils to work with. But you guys are gonna be working with just one pencil here. So I wanted to show you what this actual range of values that I should see from you. A one we actually don't even draw anything at all. A one is leaving your paper white because what's the lightest value that we can show when we're drawing on a white piece of paper? It's the actual white of the paper. So you actually are gonna pay attention to that. On this example I showed you guys, there are areas that are left completely white. Our three is when we just barely, just like a little bit of pressure, we add some value. Our five is when we're pressing pro probably what I would call normal, like when you're just writing notes or whatever, normally a five is about what comes out of our pencil. And an eight is what we get when we're really pushing hard and trying to make those shadows happen. Everything in between is just gonna help with that transition of smooth blending that we talked about. But these are our distinct values that I should see from you. So let's label these over on our other piece. Okay, so let's take these same numbers now and let's place them on here. So like I said, this one right here is gonna be on your Google Classroom. You're gonna look at this on your computer screens while you shade on the piece of paper that's in your packet. So here's a one. See this whole strip right here, right? That's a one. Take our three, that's a three. This little area right here is just like a nice mid-tone, right? Um, this guy right here is probably like a five, somewhere in between. And then right there is a really good place to put an eight. And I'm, I can't see it obviously, and that's how dark it is, right? You can barely even see that eight whenever I place it there. So that's a really good indicator that it's definitely an eight. So you can see how this is happening here. Notice how this transition goes from the right to the left. That makes sense because our light source on this is coming from our right and facing towards the left. Notice how all the shadows being casted off all these objects points towards the same direction. 
it makes sense that all of our darkest values, our fives and our eights, are going to be pushed to the left sides of all of our objects. There's an eight down here as well. This is all really dark eight stuff. Here's a nice another chance to show a five, right? These little areas of texture are ones, and these little things between are threes. I can do this to any of these objects, right? This one's a one. This is a three. There's my five, and there's my eights. From the left side, or sorry, from the right side to the left side, it gets darker as it goes. It's our job to place them in the right place so that it makes these look more three dimensional. So that's what we're going to do, and that's what I'm going to demo for you now. And then it's going to be your turn to do it on your own paper. OK, so this is what you guys have in your packets. So we're going to take this now, and we're going to, like I said, we're going to copy what we see. So what I'm going to do is just this little section of the salt and pepper shaker. Guys, another thing I want to talk about here is here's like an actual pencil, right? This is actually a drawing pencil I have, but your number two pencil will be the same. Uh, and then here is a mechanical pencil. I know that a lot of you guys like to use mechanical pencils, but we have this problem with a mechanical pencil where we shade, where we have this skinny little point. And with these, we get a, we get a much wider point that's easier to use the side. Using the side of your pencil is how we do this best. So if you're going to use a mechanical pencil, I always suggest that you let the lead out just a little bit more and you use the side of the lead like this. See how I'm holding my pencil really far back and I'm going to use the side of my lead here. If you're going to use a mechanical pencil, you're going to want to use that technique because you don't want to just hold the pencil up and down like this to shade or you're going to get all the pencil lines and it's not going to blend nicely. So I'm going to use this one to show you guys this demo. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to work around those highlights. That's what we call those number ones. So when I look at this, one of my number ones kind of made this shape kind of like this. And notice what I'm doing here is almost like outlining the outside of what that looked like. So this was all that area I'm going to leave completely white. And then right here, it goes down, it scoops around, and then I have another one off the other side of this object right here as well. It kind of goes like this. So now that I've kind of sectioned off where my number ones are going to be, I can start doing my number th twos and threes, which is just taking my pencil on its side and just kind of covering the whole object. If we were talking like really technical, this is called adding your base tone, which is just that like when any kind of light isn't hitting an object directly, you get just a little bit of a tone on everything if it's not a perfect highlight. And I'm adding the same value to the whole thing because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back on top of the areas that are darker a second time to make them darker. But if we shade a whole area really lightly in the same value first, we save some time later on, we have to make things darker. Okay, so I'm just going to do this top portion because I don't have enough time to show you this whole thing. Next, what I'm going to do is see my, ne my next darker value, which we talked about would be like our fives and our eights. And that kind of just starts from about right here and gets darker one more time. This is where smooth blending is going to come in handy. So now when after I add this one, you'll notice that it's not very smooth. And I'm kind of purposely forcing that so you guys can see this. See how I'm shading around my little highlight right there too still? OK, at home, there are many substitutes for what we call a blending stump. So normally, you have this little stump of paper that looks like a little pencil, but it's all white. And you can take it and blend it. At home, you can use a ear swab, a tissue, or literally like any kind of paper towel or anything that you might have around your house. They all work the same. The best solution is this. If you have these at home, they are awesome. What you do is now in little, little circles, I like to do little figure eights like this. You're kind of just blending this pencil together so that those lines kind of go away. And you do this, guys, between each step. And that's how you keep this value really smooth and clean. And if you ever mess up a little bit, you can take, come in with your eraser and you can kind of clean it up that way as well. OK, so now I go to my next value. So that, that's my eights. So this little area here is going to be even darker. See how far away I'm holding my pencil to? I'm going to keep making a note of that. Uh, if you're a heavy handed drawer or even writer in general, um, holding your pencil further away is always going to provide you with a much lighter and more control over the pressure that you're adding. OK, so I added that. I'm going to come back in with my ear swab again and kind of blend that a little bit. See how I'm avoiding that whole area right here? I want to make sure that highlight stays light. That's my number one. OK. When I'm looking at this, though, it still doesn't match what I'm looking at on my paper. Yes, I have a light tone and it gets darker, but it gets even darker when I'm looking at my paper. So I'm actually going to show you with this one now. 
because I want you to see me do the technique here with the, with the uh, mechanical pencil as well. So see how I'm holding it back, my hands way back on the pencil, I'm using the side of the lead and I have it out really far. I want to make my dark area here even darker. Contrast was the art principle of this week. Talk about contrast is when you make things look very different from each other. And you can see that the darker I make this tone, the more it starts to really pop out. But I want to be careful that I have this smooth little transition. See, I'm now kind of, kind of going back over my previous value too with the pencil. I'm building up layers of pencil texture here. And then I'll come back in with my ear swab and do those little circles. And guys, I want to let you know that I could probably sit here for a really long time and really make this look perfect and clean. And some of you will do that. Like there's, there's something really satisfying about really clean value and just kind of sitting there and shading with your pencil. Whenever we do this assignment uh, in person, I like the class kind of gets quiet and you just hear the sounds of shading pencils across the class. Uh, it's it's kind of what it should look and feel like for you guys that so you're just kind of like in your zone. And you can even see, I'm, I realize that I kind of blended a little too much and my little highlight right here got lost. So I'm kind of coming back in with my eraser there and I'll clean that up a little bit. And when I know that I'm in a really good spot, that's when I'll look and I'll see my areas that are really, really dark. And I'll come back through probably and go one more time to really match those values. Even like when I look at this up underneath here, there's like a shadow of this and it's like super, super dark. It's gonna create some really nice contrast. But you're gonna do this to the overall thing. You can even already see how just this little section here is starting to actually look three dimensional and starting to pop out. Your whole thing should look bad. It'll start making these round salt and pepper shakers, these apples, this orange, whatever thing that's over here. Actually, this might actually be a little apple that we want you to draw a little stem on. I can't remember exactly. Uh, these will all start looking three dimensional. Your little cast shadows, we even drew them for you. Those are gonna be your darkest areas. You're gonna make those as dark as your pencil can basically get. Okay, that's your assignment guys is to fill this whole thing up. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.